Ah, the... Heavy weapons guy. The big, strong, powerful, fat man of Team Fortress 2. Even when people don't play this game, once they hear Team Fortress 2, the fat man will come to mind. I mean, many memes like Pootis and Sandwich extend even outside the Team Fortress 2 community. However, this video is about animals. So which animal fits Heavy's profile the best? What else but the brown bear? After all, the brown bear is one of the more popular bear species, only losing out to the giant panda. But when people hear the word bear, the brown bear will usually be the first bear to come to someone's mind. Alright, before I get into the Heavy analogies, let's go over the brown bear's evolution and taxonomy. The brown bear's origin starts all the way in the middle of the Pleistocene on which the brown bear would split from what would eventually become the polar bear. Around 10,000 years later, the brown bear would eventually make its move from Asia and Europe into the Americas, though they would stay in Asia and Europe. The paper Population Genetics of Ice Age Brown Bears explains this. Brown bears are members of the family Ursidae, the bears, which have around seven subfamilies. Within these seven subfamilies, brown bears belong to Ursinae. This subfamily contains one tribe, Ursini, and this tribe only contains one genus, Ursus. Now this is where brown bear evolution just goes f You see, there are like a whole list of subspecies. Bad enough that species is already a pretty hard thing to measure when it comes to the theory of evolution. For those who don't know, a subspecies is the only taxonomic group that can be lower than species. And thank God, because then races and breeds would become part of taxonomy, and that is a rabbit hole I don't want to go down in this video. So think of it like this, heavy is the species, but how you play heavy is the subspecies. Wait, I didn't say there was going to be any heavy analogies. No, forget it. There's, here's, a, here's a heavy analogy. Brown bear subspecies include the Alaskan brown bear, grizzly bear, Kodiak bear, and the Atlas bear. Well, heavy subspecies include the Santa heavy, steak sandwich heavy, fat scout, and pyrovision gibbous heavy. This just adds confusion for the brown bear. For example, if you asked, hey Meta Z, how large is the brown bear? I would have to go, it depends. Each of these subspecies comes in different shapes, sizes, colors, and even habits. Hell, there's even a hybrid between the brown bear and the polar bear called the prisly bear, if you wanted to be confused more. There is this paper called Mitochondrial DNA Phylogeography of the North American Brown Bear and the Implication for Conservation. That explains this in more detail. Okay, on to the next subject. Heavy is quite the powerful man, seeing as he's able to carry around a gun that It costs $400,000 to fire this weapon for 12 seconds. The brown bear too has a lot of power. Only if the heavy was as strong as a real bear, he would be powerful enough to do wield two sashes. The brown bear is a powerful and deadly animal able to take out almost any animal on its way. According to the MSU research test, grizzly bear strength for Natural Geographic documentary says that the brown bear is around 2.5 to 5 times stronger than humans. All this strength is located in the bear's hump. This hump contains the muscles needed for the bear to have such immense strength. Enough strength to kill a moose with one swipe in fact. The strength of the bear also depends on its sex. As with most mammals, the male bear is usually stronger than the females, though the female will fight if a male tries to kill her cubs. The bear is also known for its thick skin and fur. It is this fur that gives the bear heavy-like durability. Both heavy and the brown bear can take a hit thanks to the way they are built. Both are strong boys. Heavy is fat for a reason. He likes to eat. I mean, I also like to eat, but I don't eat like heavy does. I mean, all those sandwiches can't be good for you, right? Well, just like Heavy loves to eat a lot, so do brown bears. The brown bear has a highly diverse diet, being one of the few animals on the planet that are omnivores. The brown bear's favorite food is salmon. The salmon is to the brown bear as the sandwich is to the Heavy. This food is so good that it brings brown bears together, despite the fact that these animals are solitary. Next on the list of foods brown bears love are plants and fungi. Plants and fungi are like the buffalo steak sandwich of the brown bear world. The brown bear has a wide range of plants and fungi that they like to eat. Brown bears like to eat fruits, mushrooms, moss, grass, acorns, pine cones, flowers, etc, etc. 
The brown bear's least favorite food, believe it or not, is mammals and birds. Bears tend to go for this the least. Part of the reason for this is that brown bears actually don't hunt that often. When it comes to eating animals like deer and moose, the brown bear would rather eat carrion. However, the brown bear is still an effective hunter, given that they run really fast. Something the heavy can't do because he is the slowest class in the game. I mean, maybe if the heavy has the gloves of urgent running, but even with them, he's still really slow. Alright, next topic. Both heavy and the brown bear have one aspect of their behavior that most people don't even know they have. Their intelligence. And yes, the heavy is smart. Went to Soviet College of Mines, Farms, and Science. I have PhD in Russian literature. That's canon. <clears throat> okay, so I can show heavy is smart, but what about the brown bear? How is the brown bear smart? The answer? Their tool use. In the wild, brown bears have been observed using rocks with barnacles on it in order to scrub themselves. Another experiment showed bears grabbing boxes in order to reach a donut they wanted to eat once they realized they couldn't reach it. Such tool using has been correlated with intelligence. For all we know, in a few million years, they could slowly evolve into a species like us. The mating season is another time in which these solitary animals are willing to come together. Similar to how the heavy should build his kid depending on the map and game mode that the heavy is in, the brown bear must mate depending on the area in which it lives. Brown bears usually have a mating season from mid-May to early July, but the further north the brown bear is, the later the bear will mate. Both male and female bears will have multiple mates. Males will usually have less mates than the female, however. Despite having multiple mates, brown bears are monogamous. This means that the bear will stick with one mate for a bit, cuddling and playing before moving on to another. Despite the mating season ending in summer, the female won't give birth until hibernation. Normally, the female bear will have a gestation period of six months. However, according to the paper, morphological characteristics of the ovary, uterus, and embryo during the delayed implantation period in the Hokkaido brown bear, brown bears can hold the embryo for longer by attaching it to the uterine wall. If the female doesn't have enough fat stored, she will abort the baby, or should I say, absorb the embryo. If everything goes as planned, the female will have one to four cubs. Again, like how the mating season depends on the factors outside of the bear's control, so does the amount of cubs. So in the area that has a lot of food, the bear will have more cubs, while areas with less food will result in less cubs. To once you capture the point in King of the Hill, you can't just sit there and pretend that once you have it, you can just sit down and enjoy your sandwich, because if you do, you might just lose what you wanted. If a female bear doesn't pay attention to her cubs, then they might be killed. You see, the female bear isn't willing to mate with any male as long as she has the cubs around, and it will take over a year before she is ready to mate again. This is what drives the male bear to attack the cubs. Think of it like this. Cubs are the point, the female bear heavy, the male bear an enemy heavy. When the male bear comes along and tries to attack the point, the goal for the female is to protect her legacy. Despite his extra strength, the female can fight off the male. However, if she were to fail, he will kill her cubs. This will eventually draw her to mate with him instead. Male bears, for some reason, won't attack their own offspring. Guess there is no point in capturing a point you already captured, eh? If the female can cover the cubs for two years, the cubs can then move out on their own and start their own lives. For more info on the strategies of bear mating, I will link the paper, Mating Strategies in Relation to Sexually Selected Infanticide in a Non-Social Carnivore. Like I said in the beginning paragraph, Heavy is the most popular character in TF2, appearing even outside of the game's franchise. Hell, Meet the Heavy might be the most remixed Meet the in existence. The Brown Bear is also a cultural icon. Let's start in the country in which Heavy comes from, Mother Russia. If you think an animal associated with Russia, chances are you are going to say a bear. Heck, other Russian characters that aren't even heavy are associated with bears. Zangia from Street Fighter wrestles bears. Zarya from Overwatch wrestles bears. Jeez, what's with Russian video game characters and wrestling bears? A brown bear that is associated with Russia is usually called the Russian bear. 
The Russian bear is a part of a lot of Russian literature, folktales, epics, and poems. The Russian bear also appears on some coat of arms, sports teams, and as mascots. After telling you this, you would think that the brown bear, or bears in general, would be the national animal of Russia, but it isn't. The brown bear is the national animal of Finland, though. The brown bear is also the state animal of California, duh, and Montana. The brown bear is also a staple of the media. Whether it be a fighting game character, a teddy bear, a monster, a cartoon character, a dead meme, or the punching bag for bodybuilding Russians, the brown bear has left its mark on human culture. But humans, in fact, other animals as well, have a bone to pick with the brown bear. Humans are the number one enemy of the brown bear, as humans have been known to hunt bears for their meat, pelts, fat, and organs. Such things were used as food, medicine, and clothing. Humans would hunt bears using tools like guns, poison, bear traps, bear spears, and dogs. So yes, certain dogs would also be enemies of the brown bear. Humans aren't the only animals that are willing to eat brown bears, however. Animals like the Siberian tiger and the golden eagle have been known to hunt down bear cubs. However, due to their large and dangerous mother, it isn't a risk they are usually willing to take. The brown bear, at least in certain parts of the world, have a rivalry with the gray wolf. With brown bears around, gray wolves tend to catch prey less often. On top of that, brown bears will go and intimidate gray wolves so that they can steal their food from them. In fact, brown bears will bully any animal for a free meal. The brown bear is quite the formidable animal, something that you don't want to take on by yourself. This animal is a powerhouse, a good defender, at least when it comes to things it likes, and on occasion, a good partner. All these traits the brown bear has, it shares with the hoovy. Alright, that's it, so thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the medic episode. I'm Meta Z, and remember, GET ON POINT, STUPID!